You're listening to Catholic Chicago. Ahead, the Archdiocese of Chicago brings you programs about the people, events, and issues that touch our lives. Welcome to Catholic Chicago. to Mission Matters Live, a program focused on promoting a spirit of mission among the people of God in the Archdiocese of Chicago. My name is Megan Mio, and I'm director of the Global Mission Office here in the Archdiocese of Chicago. Our engineers this morning are Brian and Mike. You are listening to WNDZ 750 AM, and you will hear Mission Matters on the second Wednesday of the month at 8 AM Central. We are blessed this morning to have with us David Seiler and Diane Huggins, who are here to represent the Parish Twinning Program of the Americas. Since its founding in 1978, PTPA has grown to become the largest, most significant organization of its kind, having formed more than 300 twinnings for parishes located in 78 Catholic dioceses in 31 states with Catholic parishes in Haiti and throughout Latin America. David is the executive director and Diane is president of the board of directors for this Catholic nonprofit organization that seeks to live the gospel by seeking, building, and maintaining twinning relationships between Catholic parishes. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that means to twin a parish, twin with a parish. Um, now, there is some history of parishes in the Archdiocese of Chicago having been parish twinners and um, working with this organization. But today, I wanted David and Diane to talk with us of just generally about the work that they do, about this great ministry, and the possibility that it may be an opportunity for some of our parishes here in the diocese to take on um, as we work to become missionary disciples, to look outward and, and focus on reaching out. Um, Parish twinning is one very wonderful way of doing that. So good morning, David and Diane, and thank you for joining us. Welcome. Thank you. Good morning. Great to be with you. Thanks. It's great to have you. Um, so let's start with a little background uh, for each of you. So if you would, please tell us about yourselves. Um, where are you coming from? And tell us about how you first experienced parish twinning. Diane, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. What a blessing to be here with you today. Thank you for inviting us. And um, I have lived in Hendersonville, Tennessee for 46 years. And during that entire time, I have been a member of Our Lady of the Lake Catholic Church in Hendersonville. And for 40 of those 46 years, my parish has been twinned with a parish in Haiti, St. Burton. It's in the northern department of Haiti. And my church was one of the very first parishes in the Diocese of Nashville that formed a twinning relationship in Haiti through the parish twinning program. Mm. And um, for the first 20 years of that relationship, we financially supported our parish. But then finally, we came to realize that we needed to get more personally involved. So I was blessed to be a member of the very first mission team that went to visit our twin parish. And that was a life-altering trip, I promise you. It was just incredible. Changed my life forever. And um, this experience just was so powerful that it forever changed my life. And since then, I have visited St. Burton 25 times. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to go for the past four years because of the political unrest there. But uh, I'm one of the co-leaders of the mission, and it is truly my passion. Wow. You said 40 years? <clears throat> wow. We and you said Well, I, I've been involved for uh, a little over, let's see, 22 of those 40 years, uh, personally involved. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. But, but you were on the very first trip that actually kind of connected yes. people face to face. Yes, I was. Um, some 20 years ago. Wow. That's wonderful. Well, excellent. And we'll, I'm sure we'll hear more about those experiences as we continue our conversation. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. And David, tell us about yourself. 
Yeah, I come from Indianapolis, Indiana, and um, a member of St. Matthew Catholic Church in uh, Indianapolis, and I've been a member there for 36 years, probably. And um, I was, many years ago, used to be the executive director for Catholic Charities for the Archdiocese of Indianapolis, and in that capacity, of course, I got to know many of our ministries across the diocese and some of our parish ministries, and I was a bit intrigued by this concept of, of parish twinning, so I was invited by St. Bartholomew in Columbus, Indiana, to accompany them on a mission trip to their mission parish. They're, sometimes we use the term twin, but then we say sister parish or mission parish. or They all mean kind of the same thing, and we'll get into a little bit more about the, what that relationship entails. But So I traveled with them. I actually took my oldest daughter with me who was interested in um, seeing Haiti and having that experience. So we went, uh, it was about uh, 12 years ago now. And while we were there, uh, we met a, a neighboring pastor of another parish that had just become a parish. It had been previously what in, in Haiti and Latin America they call a chapel. So it was in a, kind of an extension of a parish. But now the bishop in Capetian, the northern part of Haiti, made it a permanent uh, church. So we met that pastor and he learned that my daughter and I were from a different parish that did not have a twin. And so we very quickly became his best friends. <laughs> and he, he began to kind of, uh, well, he, he was pretty assertive about uh, inviting us to consider twinning or finding a twin for him. So uh, we knew a little bit about what it involved because of, uh, of the relationship that St. Bartholomew could explain, because they'd been doing it for about 20 years. So we, my daughter and I on the plane trip home, began to talk about that request and we decided we were going to introduce the idea to our parish and so we approached mm -hmm. some members of our social ministry uh, committee and they were interested and so it, it just blossomed from there and so now that's we've been 20 for about 11 years with uh, basically our pastor has two parishes so and then six chapels responsibility so a huge amount of responsibility so it's St. Mary who unties knots is one of the parishes and the other one is St. Isidore. So I've had a lot of direct experience with that. So I've, I've traveled to that parish, I believe, seven times. Not nearly as many as Diane, but maybe someday I'll catch up. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> someday. Wow. It, well, it takes uh, that long-term relationship, too. Um, it just takes time to have those opportunities for deeper and deeper kind of experiences of getting to know one another, too. Um, so just give it time. <laughs> But um, but yeah. now, so you both, ex you know, told us a little bit about your own personal experiences with parish twinning. But I wonder then, how did you get involved with the parish twinning program of the Americas? Um, Diane, if you would tell us a little more about that. Sure. Well, on my very, very first trip to Haiti to visit St. Burton, Teresa Patterson, uh, the founder and former executive director of PTPA, accompanied me on that trip. Um, and... You know, she was just an incredible inspiration. Uh, she's like a magnetic force. You know, she drew me into getting involved, not just with St. Burton, but getting involved with PTPA. And I have really, really enjoyed that experience as well. In, I think it was 2005, she asked me to become a member of the board of directors. And I have served on the board ever since. And uh, as a matter of fact, last year, Teresa, at, after 44 years of service, at the age of 80, uh, she wanted to retire. And so when I, as president of the board, I was involved in recruiting and hiring a new executive director, David Seiler. And I have to say, it's one of the things I am very proud of because we <laughs> did an awesome job. <laughs> David is amazing, and I'm so glad he's here today so that people can hear him and get to know him. He's he's in, an incredible leader. Awesome. Wonderful. So it sounds like, David, <laughs> that's a little bit of your introduction, but what is what was your own yeah. relationship <laughs> there with uh, the program? And now I have to kind of work to live up to that <laughs> fine uh, endorsement by our board president. But Big shoes, yeah. yeah. My engagement with a parish twinning, as I mentioned, we've, we've had a parish twin, my own parish in Indianapolis for about 11 years. And for whatever reason, and I can't really tell you why, we weren't even aware of PTPA for the first, I would say, nine years. Mm. It's, it's a bit of a mystery because St. Bartholomew has been a member for years and they just never talked to us about that. So mm. um, 
in that first nine years, we made a lot of mistakes, a lot of mistakes. And, um, and that's part of what PTA, PTPA helps with is parishes to um, not make so many mistakes because we have great history and understanding of what makes a, a twenty relationship work really well. Mm -hmm. So, but I I was uh, laid off from a previous position very unexpectedly, and mm -hmm. I reached out to a couple of friends you know, doing the networking thing, which is always the best way to find a good position. And this friend of mine said, "Hey, I heard that Teresa Patterson from Parish Twinning." And I knew Teresa because for the last couple of years, we had been involved with PTPA. And so I reached out to um, a member of their board, Father Chris um, Waddleton, who's in at St. Bartholomew in Columbus now as the pastor. And I think he reached out to Diane. And then Diane, the, from the time of that first reach out to my friend to the time I was interviewed and hired, I think was maybe four days or something. So it's, it's hard to claim much credit for it. I, cause I completely credit the Holy spirit and it just orchestrated it. I really felt like <clears throat> there, I was just along for the ride and yes, yes, Lord, whatever you want. And um, <laughs> mm -hmm. Diane and a couple of other board members uh, interviewed me and it seemed to be a, a really good fit. They were pleased that I had had experience with parish twinning, which, you know, it's, that certainly gives me a leg up uh, and it's, it's, so I started back in August, and uh, it's it's been a, an incredible learning experience. There's a lot to get to know, uh, and it's but it's been really exciting, really really exciting, very fulfilling. Wow, yeah, a whirlwind and something just the spirit <laughs> put into your heart, and it sounds like too, um, Diane, that the spirit through Teresa was was leading you in this direction as well, yes. and you said yes. yes. It was uh, miraculous, actually, as, as quickly as it happened, because we had been working for more than six months on um, the whole process. So we're grateful. Of course, David has big shoes to fill, but he's doing a good job. <laughs> yeah, following a founder of after 40 some years, um, who's she, people talk about and refer to her as the Mother Teresa of Haiti. So imagine that, having to fill those shoes. I mean, it's it's a daunting task. She, she's an amazing woman. She's still around. She's on the board of directors still. So she's a great uh, resource for me. She's incredibly wise and over that many years has developed an incredible understanding of what Parish Twinning is all about. So I, I use her as my go-to resource. Excellent. Well, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that history of PTPA in our next segment. So we'll take our first break now. We'll be right back to continue our conversation with David and Diane from Parish Twinning Program of the Americas. Stay tuned. Catholic Charities Blossoms of Hope Brunch will be held on Sunday, April 30th at Drury Lane in Oak Brook in support of the Loving Outreach to Survivors of Suicide Program, also known as LOSS. This inspiring brunch is an opportunity for all members of the LOSS community to gather with its founder, Father Charles Ruby, in support of the program and to celebrate the resilience that can be attained over time. For more than 40 years, LOSS has been compassionately accompanying individuals and families on their journey through grief. The program has been recognized by the United Nations as a model for helping those grieving this tragic event in their lives. In-person and online resources help people around the country find healing and joy in life again. To learn more about LOSS and the Blossoms of Hope Brunch, visit catholiccharities.net. How can you spend your day with three-year-olds? Seeing the changes that they go through and just the journey 
and how they grow, this is a very rewarding job. Even though at the end of the day, we're not the highest paid people on earth. And when I have a parent contact me and say, my child loves school, that to me, I'm setting that foundation for their love of learning. Because really you are changing lives, you are molding lives. Shape the next generation of leaders. Teach. Apply today at artchicago.org slash schooljobs. Catholic Charities Family Self-Sufficiency Program has assisted thousands of single parents who are working to become more self-sufficient through education and employment opportunities. Our experienced case managers accompany participants for up to five years on their journey to identify, address, and break down barriers to improving their quality of life and achieving meaningful goals for themselves and for their families. Professional, compassionate assistance is offered in a safe and trusting environment as participants develop the skills needed to become financially stable and able to support themselves. Every achievement starts with the decision to try. To learn more about Catholic Charities Family Self-Sufficiency Program, call 847-782-4233 or visit catholiccharities.net. Welcome back to Mission Matters Live. I am Megan Mio, Director of the Global Mission Office, and I'm here with Diane Huggins, President of the Board of Directors, and David Seiler, Executive Director of Parish Twinning Program of the Americas. And before the break, we were getting to know both David and Diane and their relationship with PTPA. Now I hope we can get a little bit more into some of the details about the organization. So. Um, we know that uh, the organization was founded in 1978, and you mentioned the, the founder, Teresa Patterson. Um, I wonder if uh, you could tell us a little bit more about how the organization came to be and how it's changed over the years. Diane. Sure, I'd be happy to do that. So everything began when Teresa made her very first trip to Haiti 45 years ago. Uh, in 1978, as you mentioned, and she traveled to Haiti for the first time with a man named Harry Hosey. And Harry was a businessman. He had been on a pleasure cruise that stopped in a port in Haiti, and he observed how poor the country was, and it inspired him to want to help Haiti. Mm -hmm. So he and his wife started raising money at their church in Nashville, and Teresa happened to be a parishioner there. And he spoke at, at Mass one Sunday, and it inspired Teresa to want to go. So she got with Harry, and, and they planned a trip to Haiti together. And um, just like mine, you go over there, your life is forever changed. And during this first visit with Harry, they were brainstorming, what can we do? How can we get more parishes involved? And that's when they came up with the idea about twinning, finding more U.S. parishes that were willing to help parishes in Haiti. Mm -hmm. And that was the mustard seed that grew into this amazing organization that has grown beyond everyone's expectations um, to what it is today. And we have almost 300 twinnings, uh, not just in Haiti, but we're also in 12 Latin American countries. So that's pretty incredible. And the impact has just been amazing. It really has. Mm -hmm. So with 300 parishes that are impoverished getting support from, uh, from U.S. parishes, that has touched and improved hundreds of thousands of lives through the years. Mm -hmm. And um, we have grown the number of parishes in the United States that are involved in twinnings. We have, the parish twinning program has twinnings in 31 states and in 73 dioceses. Uh, and we're in the process of really wanting to find even more parishes that are, are willing to step up and twin. Mm -hmm. And uh, Teresa through the years did financial reporting where uh, parishes would inform her about how much money they sent. And we know that we have sent at least 
50 million dollars in support to uh, parishes in in Haiti and Latin America and I believe that that's a modest number because not everybody would submit their reports but that's pretty pretty awesome and pretty incredible mm -hmm. and even though she has retired and deservedly so after 44 years of service she as David mentioned she remains very involved as an emeritus board member and she also continues to serve as the executive director of an organization called Visitation Hospital Foundation. Teresa mm -hmm. founded uh, and built a hospital in Haiti. It's called Visitation Hospital in Petite Revere de Nep. So that's mm -hmm. a little bit about the history that, uh, that we owe to the inspiration of, of Teresa Patterson. Well, that is a lot of relationships. <laughs> too yes because you're talking about relationships yes. in haiti and throughout the, those number of countries in latin america and then all of these parishes in the u.s all over the country it's amazing um to kind of keep that that those relationships going uh, i wonder david do you have something to add now that you've learned a lot yeah i sure do so um much of <clears throat> my job is to help keep those relationships going and to nurture those and it's it's certainly challenging because every parish is a little bit different in terms of what they do and in in the parishes that they're twinned with so it's uh what well, because there's differences in culture by country and even in regions in Haiti they, they can vary quite dramatically so mm -hmm. they run into a number of challenges and as Diane mentioned she hasn't traveled to her parish for four years and that's typical of most of our parishes uh, in Haiti for instance because the uh, first the pandemic then followed by the political violence there the same is true with Nicaragua. Our, our, we had a couple of parishes twin there, and they've been uh, the Catholic Church has been kicked out of the country essentially. So there's nothing going on in Nicaragua either. Mm -hmm. But um, so it's it's a lot to manage those parishes. Teresa did an incredible job over the years making those matches happen, and so that's that's certainly part of the the job that that I'll be entrusted with. That's at this point in, in our history, at least, is is a bit secondary. It's it's gonna gonna begin to happen after we get a little bit better in terms of serving our current parishes. Because we, we, we know and have come to understand that they require a lot. They really need a lot of attention and they need a lot of connections with resources. And I'd say in particular, because of this time of limited travel to, to Haiti in particular, where most of our parishes is, mm -hmm. parishes are. So Diane mentioned 300 and about 90% of those are in Haiti. The other 10% or so are in Latin America. So it's a it's, it's definitely skewed to um, to Haiti for sure. So th those parishes, um, like I said, they they struggle an awful lot. And uh, but yet, what they're able to accomplish in the midst of so much challenge is is truly remarkable. Um, the, <laughs> the the church behind Diane and her picture is an example. That was built in the last couple of years, and she can tell you a little bit more if you're interested. But it's things continue to happen, money continues to flow to, to support, actually keep some people out of starvation in, mm -hmm. in some of our countries and certainly Haiti. Um, the, the, the twinning relationship for a parish um, in Haiti in particular, really in all the countries, because they're the poorest of the poor parishes, they, they have very little. To give you an example, my parish priest in, in Haiti, his name is uh, we call him Pear is the word for father in, in, in Creole. Mm -hmm. And so its name is Pear Max. And Pear Max, his, his weekly collection is $4 a week. $4 from his two parishes, four U.S. dollars. So obviously he can do almost nothing on that. So mm -hmm. our parish does a tremendous amount to support. So that's just typical of what parishes do. They do a lot. And uh, there I am holding up the shoes that I have to <laughs> fill with from Teresa. So <laughs> as as Diane described, I got quite a legacy to follow up, and um, mm -hmm. I'm just uh, very. I have to be prayerful because it's a huge task, and I want to make sure that uh, we're able to grow the organization in terms of the services we provide to our existing twins, and then to to make additional matches with parishes. Right. Wow. Yeah, and I I wonder if you could say a little bit more too about the ways that PTPA supports and resources those parishes um, that are in the midst of, of the twinning relationships. Sure. Yeah, I'll talk about kind of at, at the beginning stages, it's it's pretty intense. As Diane described, Teresa went with her and her team on the very first mission trip. So that's pretty typical that myself or one of our uh, 
you know, folks who really understand twinning will accompany them on their very first visit. But even prior to that, there's a lot of work with the parish. Say a U.S. parish is, expresses an interest in twinning and, and finds out about this this way of living out the social mission of the church, they um, they can reach out to us and get in touch with us. And then we begin to talk with them about um, what they might be interested in. Because some, some will say, I definitely want to be involved in Mexico or Cuba or Haiti or any of the other Latin American countries. And so it begins with a conversation with them about what are you interested? What would you like to accomplish? Um, sometimes they know, sometimes they don't know. If they don't have really have any ideas, that we, it, obviously we can talk to them about what the relationship can be like and give them some examples, even connect them with other parishes who have been twinning so they can you know, hear firsthand what, what that's been like. Because mm -hmm. we've had parishes that have been twinning for more than 40 years. It's, it's truly remarkable. And because of that long relationship, they really know what they're doing. They know the mistakes to avoid. Mm -hmm. So we, along the way, after they're, after they're matched, and, and that's, it's just, it's almost like match.com in a way. We're matching <laughs> parishes with, uh, with churches in these countries where uh, we first of all discern where where the what country they're interested in working in mm -hmm. and then we have a list of i mean i'll give you an idea right now we have over 100 parishes in haiti that are seeking a u.s twin mm -hmm. and over 100 parishes in latin america and we've done nothing to advertise that we <laughs> make these matches it's simply been by word of mouth wow. so we do go through this matching process and then for the for the parishes that are twin the, the we provide a lot of resources for them, connections to, it might be typical for parishes, we need to build a well. We have no no clean water in our village. Mm -hmm. So we'll help them find a, a well drilling organization in, the, in in their region to help that get done. And it might be a, a clean water system or who, who could help us build a church? Well, mm -hmm. we can help you locate resources. So uh, parishes tend to get into doing a whole lot. You begin with this just kind of friendship, relationship building, yeah. uh, but, you find out that most of these parishes need everything. They some literally have their their church is nothing but a tin shack. I mean, open air, nothing but a thatch roof, maybe a tin roof, and that's all they have to worship in. And so, um, you begin to realize that they they need it, need uh, just about everything. And you can't help but move to want to help because the the poverty. We really have nothing to compare it to in the United States because the poverty in, in Haiti and some of these Latin American countries is um, is unlike anything. They have no safety net in these countries. You know, yeah. Catholic Charities in the Diocese of Chicago, they provide housing and food and mm -hmm. refugee resettlement services, all kinds of things. Well, mm -hmm. there's no such thing in the country of Haiti, for instance. No options. Yeah. So one other thing that I would add is that uh, an important th role that we play is sharing best practices. Like David said, we've all been over there trying to do good, making mistakes, and learning from that. And so, you know, one of the values of PTPA is our ability to share best practices that will prevent people from making the same mistakes that others have made. So... Um, and, and we've been working very hard on developing a very robust resource library so that we have everything well organized and easy to share with others. Excellent. Well, I would imagine, too, there's some work involved in, in getting on the U.S. side, getting a whole parish involved in it and getting the information to people and, and using it as an opportunity for formation and development of the faith of, of the members of our community here in the U.S., right? Um, and I'm sure yes. there's a lot of good best practices for that as well. Um, yes, that we do have um, a list of best practices there. We recommend developing, finding leadership, people who are willing to, to lead the parish mission, organizing a committee of volunteers, getting people involved, and then obviously making personal visits. So, um, yeah, we're, we're able to share some best practices about how to lay the foundation to, to do good work. Excellent. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much. It's time for another break, if you can believe it. We'll be back in just a moment to talk more about parish twinning and mission with Diane and David. Don't go away.
Caring adults make all the difference in the lives of adolescents. Catholic Charities understands this, and our mentorship programs provide a free opportunity for young adults to spend time with volunteers who genuinely care about them. This program is ideal for youth aged 9 through 12 who may need support navigating the challenges of childhood and early adolescence. Our amazing volunteers service friends who help youth recognize their strengths and empower them to reach their full potential. Catholic Charities conducts a thorough background check on every volunteer and our program coordinator closely monitors and supports every relationship. Mentoring is a fun after-school program that can help young adults build confidence and enjoy fun activities with their peers too. To learn more, visit catholiccharities.net or call 312-655-7970 in Cook County and 847-782-4224 in Lake County. We're connecting youth with great role models. Join us today. I am a seminarian. The church needs compassionate and well-trained priests to help guide each of us through life. What inspires me, what draws me always to the priesthood is continue to see priests be a beacon of hope for other people. You can play a part in the education of these young men as they prepare for a life of service to others. I want to be that beacon of hope too, and it, it sets my heart on fire. To support our seminarians, make your gift at archchicago.org slash seminarian fund or call 312-534-7959. The Cemetery Ministry is a core ministry of our Catholic faith tied to the corporal works of mercy. It's comforting to know that our Catholic cemeteries are caring for the remains of our loved ones awaiting the resurrection. There are 44 Archdiocese of Chicago Catholic cemeteries willing to help you in your time of loss. Call 708-449-6100 or visit catholiccemeterychicago.org. Catholic Cemeteries, serving the Catholic community since 1837. You're listening to Catholic Chicago. Ahead, the Archdiocese of Chicago brings you programs about the people, events, and issues that touch our lives. Thanks for letting us be part of your morning. Now again, Catholic Chicago. Welcome back to Mission Matters Live. I am Megan Mio, Director of the Global Mission Office in the Archdiocese of Chicago, and you're listening to WNDZ 750 AM. I'm here with David Seiler, the Executive Director, and Diane Huggins, President of the Board of Directors of the Parish Twinning Program of the Americas. This organization helps uh, to build, seek, build, and maintain twinning relationships between Catholic parishes in the U.S. and Catholic parishes in Haiti and Latin America. In our last segment, um, we were talking a little bit about the history and some of the current work of PTPA. Um, but you both also shared at the, the top of the show, you've had your own personal experiences of parish twinning and your own experiences actually traveling to Haiti and, and getting to know people. Um, both in your own parishes here and in, in Haiti. Um, and uh, you've both now, David, for just a short time, but you've been involved with PTPA for some time, um, which, you know, seeks to kind of guide and resource parishes in that experience. So I wondered if you can share with us some stories or experiences that you've had um, seeing the impact of the parish twinning experience. Um, both perhaps the, the measurable side of it and then the, the part that's harder to see or is, is more of an experiential element. Um, David, would you get us started? Sure, glad to. You know, the, I mentioned earlier the, the poverty that you see, and that, that it, that's hard to take as a, as a U.S. citizen. It's certainly um, breathtaking. And But what, what moved me so much from the very first time I set foot into the island is the joy of the people of Haiti. And they here are folks who have 
um, in some cases, nothing or next to nothing. Um, maybe not even a, a decent place to live, not even close to decent according to our standards. And But yet when they gather for mass, which we've had the opportunity to do, they, they do do with such joy. And um, mm-hmm. the singing and the, and the celebration is, is truly remarkable. I recall one time uh, we were, my, this was when our pastor lived a great distance from his church and we had two flat tires on the way to church. So here's the pastor driving, you know, we were literally one hour and 45 minutes late for church. And I thought, oh, if that happened in the U.S., so the congregation would be long gone. Well, we arrived and they, the entire congregation is still waiting in the church patiently, not a complaint in the world. They're just happy that the pastor showed up. Of course, mass couldn't start because we had the pastor. So we showed up and there wasn't even a word about the, the lateness but they were so ready to, to celebrate mass. It, it was if the, there was, it was just right on time. And so the singing began and the celebration took place. And I, I was just stunned by um, how important mass was that they were willing to wait. And it's in the heat. It's very hot in the church because it's, there's very little air movement in the, what this, this particular church in St. Isidore. So um, really, really struck by the faith of the people. So it is, it has enriched my own faith tremendously. I've had the opportunity, I've done multiple cursios and I started Christ Renews' parish at my own parish and have done multiple weeks. I've had a lot of very, very enriching spiritual experiences, but nothing has come close to the spiritual experience I've had in Haiti. So when I bring that back to my parish and I've been able to take people to, to Haiti and then come back to my parish who've had that same experience, what that does to our local church is is truly remarkable. That that mm-hmm. spirit that we bring is infectious to the rest of the congregation, and I think builds our own faith in the U.S. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 the idea of a, a, a parish twin or that mission relationship, it, it's it's mutual, right? It's sort of a two way. There there are mm-hmm. some very basic needs certainly um, in Haiti and throughout Latin America. But um, but there is a lot that's received uh, to the U.S. parish as well. It sounds like you're basically you know you're describing those those gifts that are takeaways um, from especially the uh, ability to go in person and and to see and to meet people face to face. Um, but I'm sure, you know, there's an element of, of you. We've talked about this before on the radio show here, where like it just bubbles out when you've had that kind of an experience um, that it, you just share it with others automatically. You can't help it. And others can see that in you um, that you've had this mission experience. It's just the way the evangelization works. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. the, the love just comes right out of you. Wonderful. Diane, do you have a story you can share? Yes. And I uh, hope you don't mind. I'm going to share a couple of personal uh, stories. Mm-hmm. Um, like you said, it's a two way transformation and um, the experiences are so powerful and so personal and you know I have seen lives transformed not just the lives of the poor people but the lives of the people who go on these mission trips and it's it's just an incredible experience we truly see the face of God in the people that we serve there and um, you know the whole saying that it is in giving that we receive um, that is why most missioners get so hooked the, when they go for the first time. And most people that go don't just go once. I mean, it's it's something that it's such a profound experience. You want to go back again and again. And the people of your twin parish kind of become members of your family. And um, what's interesting is that I, on my very, very first trip to Haiti, I met a young man. His name is Markendi Santiel. And he has truly become my son, my Haitian son. Mm. And, you know, he was 16 years old the first time that I met him, and he was an orphan. He was going to high school, uh, and and he knew how to speak a little bit of English, and so he and I made a connection. Um, But he really, you know, he needed help to stay in school. Mm. And his uncle came to me personally and asked me if I would help him. And I, of course, I did. Mm. And I remember Mark Indy taking me to his house where he lived for the very first time. And I was so shocked. I mean, he lived in a little one-room mud shack. Mm. You know, the, the house was made out of mud and sticks. 
And eventually it washed away in a rainstorm. Mm -hmm. And I, I just couldn't believe the circumstances that he lived in. And, but the fact that he was so committed to doing something with his life. And so uh, Mark Andy moved to Capation and he attended the university there. He graduated high school, graduated from the university in Capation with a degree in education. And after that, he went back to St. Burton. You know, a lot of, of young people who end up going to the university never look back. And, and he did. He went back. He became the principal of a school. St. Burton had a primary school, but he started a middle school. And he added a grade every year. And then he started a high school. And I am so excited that in June, I'm going to attend the very first graduation of St. Burton High School. So it's just an incredible miracle, you know, and, and helping him is the greatest investment I have ever made. Mm -hmm. uh, just absolutely incredible. And then I have one other personal story to share about my grandson. His name is Hawken Kirshner. Mm -hmm. And Hawken, when he was in high school, made three mission trips with me. And um, it, it was just amazing to, to be able to experience that with him because he is definitely living proof of the power of getting young people involved in mission work. Mm -hmm. um, from the moment he arrived in Haiti on our very first trip, his heart was on fire. Mm -hmm. He was just bouncing off the walls, just so excited to be there. And he made friends with uh, boys, teenage boys there, and they hung out with him. And he tried to help them learn English. They tried to help him learn Creole. Mm -hmm. And uh, he visited St. Burton School. He played soccer with the kids. He danced with them. He visited their homes. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the most profound experiences, I took a picture, and I know a lot of people, uh, you won't be able to see this on the radio, but mm -hmm. it's a picture of Hawk and Holding a one-day-old infant. Mm -hmm. And one of the friends that Hawken made in Haiti, he went to visit him, and his sister was pregnant, and she went into labor. And she needed to get to a clinic, but she didn't have money to, for transportation. So Hawken gave her money for transportation to go to the clinic. Mm -hmm. And the very next day, he went back to the house, and she handed Hawken her newborn baby and, and told him he was the godfather. So it was just such an incredible experience and an incredible blessing to him. So um, it's, it's just so enlightening to experience those kinds of, of things in, on mission trips. Thank you, too, for talking about young people in mission. I think, you know, mm -hmm. we, we have a responsibility to um, share this with the next generations and to... They, yes. you know, they can see things that we can't see too. I think the, the yes. possibilities, the relationships, the just openness to, um, especially cross-cultural and cross-language and all that kind of stuff. Relationships um, are just just come easier <laughs> for young people. They're, they're the best missionaries. That's my take on the on the matter. They know things, you know, that we've kind of forgotten. Um, that's wonderful and a life changing excuse me, life-changing experience for him, I'm sure, too. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And it really paved the way for his college career. He has focused on sustainable development and, and things like that. Wow, excellent. Yeah, well, you know, I also want to mention a, a personal story that that's, um, shows the impact of young people. I, I agree. And I, I think it's, you know, we're all aware of, the challenge of keeping young people in, involved in the Catholic Church, and that it, it is a universal problem. Mm -hmm. And but but I find that young people they want to get their hands dirty. They want to do something. It's you know the worship experience of, of that we go to um, masses. You know it doesn't connect for some kids, and I get that. But they do, they want to do something. So here we give them through through twinning an opportunity to practice the faith. I mean, we all if you grew up a Catholic, you know. Uh, you know who your neighbor is because we somebody asked Jesus, who's my neighbor? Mm -hmm. Well, they may be in a different country, speak a different language, but they're our neighbor. Mm -hmm. And so we do have a, a responsibility and I'd say a great privilege of being able to 
become part of their lives. You know, we don't we don't approach twinning as I'm going down there to help these poor people. Some people have that mindset, but it is I'm going to be in relationship with these people, walk with them, and and we're going to share our faith together. And that's the important aspect. But I've had the chance to take a lot of young people, and most proud of having taken uh, three of my four daughters, and they in a similar way to Hawken, uh, they've been very captivated by the experience. One of my daughters was in, uh, what, her name is Elizabeth. She was in high school. She became really aware of the the, uh, the lack of health care in Haiti. It's uh, For some, it's not even accessible, and for others, they, they can't afford it, and the health care itself is not very good in most areas. So she decided as a career to become a nurse, mm-hmm. and she had never considered that before. Her This, this trip, she's, she's now graduated from Marion College, a good Catholic college here in Indianapolis. She's a nurse, and she's doing travel nursing now, but she can't wait for the opportunity to travel to uh, to Haiti and do some um, some medical mission work. Um, so th- the impact it can have on people's lives and it, it's it's profound. There's um, not many experiences that people get to have that have that kind of impact. Yeah, absolutely, hands on as you say. Wonderful. Well, it's time for yeah. our last break. We have one more segment left. Uh, we'll be back to conclude our discussion with David and Diane of Parish Twinning Program of the Americas. Stay tuned. Catholic Charities founding mission. For more than 100 years, we have met people and families where they are, serving anyone in need, regardless of their faith, gender, race, or ethnicity. As our world absorbs the economic, political, and social aftershocks of the pandemic, 50% or more of the 6 million people living in Cook and Lake counties have little or no savings. They are a paycheck away from zero. We are deeply grateful to everyone in the Catholic Charities community who partners with us to alleviate the suffering of the people we serve and offer them a better path forward. We are witnessing a message of mercy and hope to a world very much in need. Learn more at catholiccharities.net. Welcome back. Es fabuloso verlos. Dobrze jest znowu być razem. It's good to be together again. After so many months apart, pandemic capacity limits have been lifted, and we want to welcome everyone back to church. We can all pray together again. And listen as our choirs lift their voices in song. We've been together in spirit. And now when you are ready, our doors are open wide. Nuestras puertas están abiertas de par en par. Nasze drzwi są otwarte. And we're here to welcome you back to Catholic Mass. Do you have an old bicycle that's not being used? Consider donating it to Catholic Charities Veterans Bike Project of Lake County. Skilled volunteers are refurbishing bicycles to make them safe and ready to be used by veterans to get to and from their new places of work. We also gratefully accept financial contributions that are used to purchase bike helmets and other safety accessories. Our veterans have faithfully served the United States, and now it is our privilege to serve them. For more information on the Veterans Bike Project of Lake County, call 847-782-4219. That's 847-782-4219.
Welcome back to Mission Matters Live. I am Megan Mio, Director of the Global Mission Office, and I'm here with Diane Huggins and David Seiler, who are Board President and Executive Director of the Parish Twinning Program of the Americas. We've been talking about the work of PTPA and what a difference this organization has made for people and parishes, both in the U.S. and in Haiti and, and many Latin American countries as well. Um, so having shared your, your personal experiences, some of these kind of memories that have really stuck in your mind and, and people who have really stayed with you over the years um, and in your parish and personal and then parish mission experiences with the twinning. Uh, I wonder, um, talking more about the work of PTPA, if we could talk a little bit about people who might be interested in, in twinning through their parish, what that process would be like. So David, could you tell us about how somebody could get started? Yeah, I sure hope that the, uh, those of who, who've listened have become interested in twinning because I can assure you it'll be one of the most remarkable experiences of your life and so incredibly rewarding. Um, I feel so proud to be able to be a Catholic because this is, this is one of the things that um, an expression of our Catholic faith, faith that is um, so remarkable and, 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 like I said, a great privilege. So um, what I'd encourage folks to do is first visit our website because you can, you can learn a lot just by seeing uh, some of the information there, what it's about, what it might be like. But the next step would be to reach out. Um, we have a, there's a, you know, you can reach out via email through the website. You can also um, call. You'll get me because um, I am, I'm, <laughs> I'm one of the only folks uh, fully employed by PTPA. So it'll likely be us having a conversation, but I can really kind of guide you through the conversation. And, and obviously for some, it's how do I introduce this to my church? And um, that that's you know not an easy process. How I how do I introduce this to my pastor? Because not, not every pastor is aware of this ministry, yeah. and some may not even be interested in having a international mission. But it's my belief that as Catholics we should we should have both a you know a mission for within our own parish, perhaps uh, within our own community, yeah. and then somewhere in the world. Mm -hmm. And it should be more than just sending money abroad. You know we can give to great they're. Catholic Relief Services and some of the international uh, ministries are, are wonderful. We can give money, but if you really want to um, go deeper and form a relationship with folks outside of the country, this is a great way to do that. So mm -hmm. we can begin to have a conversation and just explore how do I how do I make this happen in my parish? Um, it, it takes some work. There's no doubt about it, and you you do have to do some fundraising and be prepared. We can provide a lot of advice on how to do that. We've had tremendous success in my parish, Diane's as well. She can uh, certainly verify that in many of our parishes because part of it, although, you know, it's all about a relationship and a spiritual connection, it's, it's, there's no doubt going to be some, um, some material needs in the country you're twinned with. So uh, at some point, it doesn't have to be right away, but certainly at some point you're going to want to do some things and that, and it requires resources to do that. We can help advise you along the way how to do that. But I can just assure you that that's what we're here for is to be with you every step of the way. You're not alone. We can connect you with lots of folks to mentor you through the process because uh, some parishes, they've, as I said, have done it for so long. We can pair you with somebody who's been doing it longer uh, for quite a long time and, and be, a, be a guide to you along the way. Sure. Great. Now, that website, for those um, who are listening, is ptpausa.org. Uh, that's PTPA standing for Parish Twinning, Program of the Americas, USA. And uh, we also have been seeing here, those of you who are watching us, um, there's a Facebook page as well for PTPA, and you can see some more uh, recent uh, posts there with uh, some information. And I wonder, are there some other events or upcoming opportunities for people to connect through PTPA? One of the things that we've just recently started and had our second month of was, was a, we call it a Zoom gathering because of the, the incredible ability through technology now to gather people from literally all over the world. Uh, we've been able to begin to gather our PTPA community via Zoom and um, just a, an opportunity for us to get to know one another, to ask each other questions, to share information on various topics related to twinning. So um, you can find uh, the information about that on our website and we provide information about that on our Facebook page as well. But that's one way for people to get involved. Now, we do host a, 
um, a, a national conference that happens about every four years, depending on pandemics and things like that. Right. That could that could change, but uh, we generally hold a national conference where we have two or three hundred people gather, and they are incredible ways to equip people to continue in their in their twinning journey. We have experts on just about everything at those conferences. In Indiana, we have a, have a yearly conference uh, just for Indiana that'll be coming up in October. So some some uh, states or regions have, have put together conferences as, as well. Mm -hmm. Well, here in Illinois, we're not too far away. Um, so excellent. Um, now we just have a few more minutes left, but I wonder if Diane, you could give your thoughts and your advice for somebody who might be thinking about starting parish twinning in their parish? Well, obviously it's a very fulfilling experience and um, one that I highly recommend. And as David said, it's amazing how easy it is to raise money to help. I mean, my parish, there are people that are such generous givers that we never really have to ask. It just, the, the money comes in and we're able to help our twin parish. And the way I describe a twinning relationship, it's kind of like a marriage. Mm -hmm. You know, from my perspective, it's a lifelong endeavor. I mean, I want to stay connected to St. Burton for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And um, another thing similar to a marriage is that every, every twinning is unique because both t parishes are unique. There is no cookie cutter way to do a twinning. Yeah. But um, like a marriage, twinning requires a mutual two-way commitment to the relationship. And it, there's just absolutely nothing more fulfilling. Wow. Excellent. Well, this is really good information. Um, we have just a minute left. David, I'll give you the final word. What do you have to say? Well, it's, it really is a word of thanks, too. Thank you, Megan, for uh, including us, too, because we're, we're not real well known. Uh, if you haven't had an experience with twinning, um, people may not even be aware. And I hope it's opened some eyes to at least for, for, for folks to maybe explore the op opportunity. And um, I just want to encourage folks to uh, just take a step in faith, maybe just start praying about it. Yeah. That's how it all begins. And the Holy Spirit will start to move your heart. And, and even if I would even offer to some parishes, if they, they think they're interested, you know, we can accompany you on a, an initial trip, just we call it an explore, exploration trip, just to kind of check it out and see what it might look like. We've, the, Teresa has done that over the years with many parishes, just to inquire. Um, it's kind of like seeing is believing. And when you, you see it firsthand, you realize this is really something I want to do. So mm -hmm. I encourage you to uh, consider, you know, taking a step out in faith and joining us. Yeah, and I, I would say, too, my, my thoughts and feelings, having heard from you both now, is you're not alone in doing it. We're part of a bigger right. community. That's one of the wonderful things about being Catholics is that we are part of yeah. this universal church with our, our, our partners and, and um, companions in Haiti and Latin America and then with one another, too, all over the U.S. So wonderful. Well, thank you very much for joining us today, um, both of you your work of accompaniment and leadership are a gift for our global church. So um, may your work continue to bring communities of faith together, to live and act as one for the mission of Jesus Christ. A reminder to our listeners to learn more about Parish Twinning Program of the Americas. You will go to the website at ptpausa.org to learn more. I wish you all a very blessed and joyous Easter. Thank you for listening. And remember, always be on mission.